Hello, this is Paul Check. Welcome to my video blog today. We're going to talk about simple aids to digestion. As is so often the case, your primary resource for learning how to eat, move, and be healthy, and how to digest properly and what causes problems of digestion is my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy. And in chapter 14, Is Your Digestive System Healthy? Comes Each chapter comes complete with a mind map so that if you really are in a rush, you can read the entire book in about an hour and get the key points of what causes a problem in that system and how to balance it out. So with that said, so you have a resource that we can get deeper into on your own time, this is just an aid to helping you realize that this book can be very helpful, as can Holistic Lifestyle Coach Level 1 training with me or one of my highly qualified instructors at the Czech Institute, which is C-H-E-K institute.com. So let's start by looking at some of the common symptoms of compromised digestion. Then we'll look at common causes and then I'll share some tips so you can avoid and or heal from compromised digestion. Common symptoms, which you can see right out of my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, are gas, bloating, headache, typically within an hour of eating, some people will get a headache, which usually indicates that the liver and the gallbladder system is under stress and you're not breaking fats down, but it can be other things such as food intolerance. Burping, burping out of the ordinary. Reflux, which means burping your food up from your stomach, which has acid in it and tastes really bad, which by the way, most people are given antacids for, bur for reflux. It's almost always caused by a lack of hydrochloric acid. And even though the antacids often alleviate the discomfort of burping up stomach acid, they actually make the situation worse in most cases. Being low on hydrochloric acid is extremely common today. And if the body cannot effectively break down foods, especially proteins, the stomach will hold on to them longer and longer. So as you keep eating successive meals, your stomach literally just backs up to where you're burping it right up into your mouth. So the answer usually is you need digestive support in the form of hydrochloric acid or digestive enzymes, not an antacid. So be very, very careful about taking antacids when you have weak stomach acid because it is one of the fastest ways to get a parasite infection. Remember, hydrochloric acid is the number one killer of parasites entering your body because most of that stuff comes in by way of food and water. Distension means bloating, or your organs feel swollen out. Chronic hunger is a common side effect of poor digestion because people cannot get nutrients out of their food. If you cannot digest a food, no matter how good it is, you can't get the nutrient value out of it. So oftentimes people will come to me with all sorts of high quality foods in their diet and all sorts of super duper supplements, but their digestive systems aren't working good enough to actually take advantage of all these expensive supplements. So we would have been better spending the time and energy and resources to improve digestion first. Uh, bowel integrity, in other words, do you have normal bowel movements, what I call a poopy policeman, which is demonstrated in the digestion chapter I showed you earlier. Any kind of irregularity in the bowel can lead to digestive trouble particularly constipation, which I'll highlight in a minute. And muscle and joint aches are also common side effects of digestive trouble, especially in people who are physically active, which is usually because A, the biochemistry of their diet is imbalanced, so it typically creates an acidic condition of the body. One, that's one, two, they're often eating too much meat, which causes too much uric acid and other metabolic waste to build up in the body. Three, people that are not digesting well, commonly are dehydrated, which can lead to muscle and joint problems as well. Four, oftentimes funguses and parasites get into the body and irritates uh, the muscle joint systems as well. So that's not an exhaustive list, but it's enough to give you some common symptoms. Common causes of digestive trouble. Now that we know the symptoms, let's look at the cause. The most common cause of digestive trouble is stress, bar none. So, Many people run around looking for this pill and that pill, but taking my four doctor approach as I show in healing fungal and parasite infections, the absolute essentials, is essential because
people have a tendency to want to medicate the actual cause of digestive troubles and parasite problems without actually looking at the cause. And the cause usually is diet and lifestyle factors and core values. In other words, the choices that you're making consciously or unconsciously. Okay? So stress is number one. Food quality, poor food quality, and cooking too, food too much. Even if you have really high quality food, if you overcook it, you will kill the food, you'll kill the enzymes, you'll destroy too much of the nutrition in the food, and the benefits gained in cooking foods like high fiber foods and some meats that need to be cooked can be lost if you overcook the food. So there's a whole science to knowing how much to cook foods, but a lot of it is being aware of what is too much and what's not enough. For example, I would encourage people to eat red meats cooked as little as possible so that they're as alive as possible, but cooking a steak to well done means you basically you're just eating dead carcass, really. So food quality has to be high or you're not going to have adequate enzymes and nutrition in there to begin with. And be careful about how much you cook the food, knowing also that some people have a hard time with raw food because they can't break the fiber down. So if you're unable to incorporate adequate amounts of raw food, it usually means that you're going to need some of the enzymatic support that I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, eating too fast is a very, very common cause of digestion. Uh, and I'll talk about that. Constipation is another big cause of indigestion, which is frequently overlooked even by healthcare professionals. But remember, if you're eating three meals a day and you're only pooping once every three days, or even once a day could be a problem, you have a lot of backup in the system. The digestive tube runs from mouth to anus. So if you back up the intestinal tract, but you keep eating, the food's got nowhere to go. So I've seen more cases than I can count of people who are backed up from the anus all the way to the mouth, and that produces gastrointestinal reflux and many other unwanted problems that often result in diagnosis of this or that and pills for this or that that aren't addressing the real problem. Okay? And poor food combining choices, such as mixing starches and meats, and I'll address that briefly down here, but the real issue is go get a basic book on food combining study or look on the internet. You can find that in a few minutes. And the side effects of medical drugs can cause lots of trouble with digestion. So anybody taking any prescribed medical drugs or even over-the-counter medical drugs who has digestive trouble should take the time and energy to get on the internet, do a little bit of research, and see if compromised digestion is a side effect of the drugs that you are taking. Or you can look at the book Drug Facts and Comparisons, uh, which is not published by drug companies. Therefore, it has a lot of side effects that are not in standard resources, and you can learn a lot. Now, let's look at some tips. First and foremost, the environment and the pace of eating is extremely important whenever you're looking at issues of digestion. Remember, the most common cause of digestive trouble is stress. Many, many people eat in stressful environments. I've had cases where digestion was so poor in business executives that I had to encourage them to schedule lunches completely alone. Many people try to conduct business while they're eating. Very, very bad idea if you want to be a healthy person. Also, usually an indicator that you're not valuing uh, yourself enough and giving yourself enough time to be present with yourself and present with your food. Some people eat so fast they don't even taste the food. You could practically throw anything on their food, literally cat food, dog food, or anything, and they wouldn't even notice because they're in such a hurry to outgas themselves, say what they got to say, and rush off to the next appointment, all of which falls into the category of stress. Francis Marion Pottinger in his book Symptoms of Visceral Disease and in a number of resources written by the, shall we say, older, wiser medical doctors, people like Bernard Jensen, the Braggs, Paul C. Bragg and his wife, people like that, uh, many others, I could go a long list, have all warned that the digestive system, if compromised, needs the support of an environment that is conducive to digestion. Francis Marion Pottinger talked about how in his sanitarium where he treated people with tuberculosis and other diseases, that he had to make sure that they weren't reading books, that the environment was calm, that music was supportive, 
and that the eyes would be in a relaxed environment. The eye system is so energy consumptive that if people are reading or watching television who also have digestive trouble, that they may extract so much energy from the body that it can compromise digestion. So remember, most of the stuff we see on television, here on the radio, and read in newspapers is stress making. So my advice for anyone with digestive trouble is make sure you have adequate time to be present with your food and yourself while eating. Do not rush. Do not watch television, read, or listen to the bad news hours or your digestion will stay forever compromised. Okay. Pace of eating. Remember the Taoist adage, drink your food and eat your water. Chew your food until it's liquid and drink it. And don't pour piles of liquid in your body because it's stressful to your body. The Taoists say that by masticating your water, you mix your saliva with it, which carries spleen chi, or the life force energy of the spleen, which aids in digestion. I have found that the more I apply the rule, drink my food and eat my water, the more energy I get from my food and the better I feel after eating. And as a general rule of thumb, I think anybody that pays attention gets those results. Next, there are a number of herbs that can be used to support digestion. Herbs you can cook with, herbs you can add to salad dressings or add right to food or take as a supplement to digestion. Environments are gin uh, examples are ginger, garlic, licorice, cider vinegar, lemon or lime juice, peppermint, fennel seed, and there's many, many more. Uh, numerous places sell digestive aids as herbs. You can go to AmericanWildFoods.com, for example. They have a digestive support made largely of herbs. Many books. Healing with Whole Foods by Paul Pitchard probably has plenty of that kind of stuff in it. Uh, anything written by Bernard Jensen will have that kind of stuff in it. Next, uh, we want to look at digestive enzymes. And here I just want to remember lemon and lime juice I wrote there. No. Not necessarily the whole lemon or lime, but the juice. Next, we want to look at digestive enzymes. A simple test you can do to determine whether or not you may benefit from digestive enzymes is squeeze a lemon. Take a whole lemon. The worse your digestion is, usually more lemon or lime juice you're going to need. I prefer uh, something that came right off a tree, not the kind of manufactured juice in a bottle, by the way. Uh, take a half a lemon to a whole lemon, squeeze it into a cup. Drink about a third of that. At the beginning of your meal, you can chase it with water. So about a third of what you have in your cup. Eat some food. About halfway through the meal, drink the next third. And at the end of the meal, drink the final third of your lemon juice or lime juice. And if you notice a reduction in any of these types of symptoms of any significance, it's an indication that you would be aided by a digestive enzyme. There's a lot of different types of digestive enzymes. There's many different combinations of enzymes. Typically, most people I find need something with pancreatic enzymes, ox bile or hydrochloric acid added as a general digest uh, digestive aid, largely to break down flesh foods. There are enzymes specializing for fats. There's enzymes specializing for carbohydrates. So the, the, there's a wide variety, but a good place to start is just a high quality general digestive enzyme. Companies that make uh, good ones, for example, is Standard Process Laboratories, uh, Solar makes one. I mean, there there's so many of them, and it may not necessarily be the company or the quality as one being better than the other, as it is the combination of enzymes. And some people may have to try three or four before they find one that works right for their body. Some know that that's pretty normal. You should feel better if you're using a digestive enzyme, not worse in any way. So if you're using one, and maybe your digestion feels better, but something else is off, like you start burping up acid or you feel tired or you uh, have weird symptoms, anything like that. Just means to keep trying until you find one that works better for you. Very important tip about using digestive enzymes. First and foremost, the symptoms that lead one to using a digestive enzyme are, are the same symptoms that reappear when you're using too much or if your body no longer needs the digestive enzyme. Once your body, once you start using digestive enzymes, the cells of the stomach and the 
cell sites in the body that produce enzymes to aid digestion all get a chance to, rat, to rest. So all of a sudden, you can reach a point where your body starts to produce enough of its own enzymes and hydrochloric acid that with the addition of an additional digestive aid or digestive enzymes, you now start digesting the lining of the stomach because there's too much digestive power. That pr produces usually inflammation and irritation, bloating and gas and discomfort, exactly like the symptoms most people have. The mistake people make is they start taking more digestive enzymes and it gets worse, so they get confused. So once you start a digestive enzyme, you should notice improvement. If you feel improvement but feels like you still need more help, add another one. Eventually you'll find out where you're getting the right effect and where you're doing too much and too little. Then just pay attention that as your body begins to heal, if all of a sudden you start feeling that your digestion's worsening again, try backing down on the enzymes before you try adding. And normally, if you've been on them for three, four weeks or more, you're typically going to find that a reduction in the enzyme is needed. Most people don't go up once they find their original dose because if you're following the directions in my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, your general diet and lifestyle modifications to support digestion, each day and each week that goes by while you're using digestive enzymes, your overall symptoms should be decreased your overall level of digestibility should go up. So most people don't need more once they do their initial testing. They typically need to wean themselves off. Or you just eat your own stomach lining up and that's not good. Okay, hydration. If you look at your, the book, Your Body's Many Cries for Water by Dr. Batman Jelich, he explains that when we're dehydrated, because the mucous membrane of the stomach is largely water, and there's, you know, it's about a centimeter or more thick, there's a quite a water reserve in our mucous membranes. So if we're dehydrated, we can extract water from the stomach to support central nervous system and core survival functions, which then decreases the functionality of the mucous membrane, which can lead to irritation from the release of your own hydrochloric acid. And that's not a good idea since it's so easy to fix. And as I said before, you can do the pinch test. Just grab a pinch of skin, let go. It should return to normal in less than one second. The longer it takes, the more dehydrated you are. So if you're having any kind of digestive problems, check to see if you're hydrated. And ideally, you want to drink a couple glasses of water before each meal. I find that's very helpful for people that have digestive trouble. Drink two glasses of water at least 20 minutes before a meal so that you don't dilute digestive enzymes while you're um, eating. In other words, don't drink a lot of water with your food. Once you start eating, you should have hydrated a good 20 minutes before while you're eating, just enough to wash the food down because people with weak digestion that drink a lot while they're eating dilute the enzyme strength by adding more and more water. So you can actually weaken your own digestion by drinking too much with your food, just enough to wash it down. Okay? And then a parasite cleanse. Many digestive problems can be the direct result of parasites. There are uh, parasites that like the stomach, like H. pylori as an example. Um, you, there's a number of parasites in, that can be affect your stomach, either directly or indirectly. Anybody with a parasite infection usually has some form of disrupted digestion with it. Anything that affects the bowel rhythms can affect digestion. So uh, it may not necessarily be the stomach, the parasite that it excuse me, it may not be that the parasites in your stomach, it could very well be that you're having physiological reactions through the gut to two parasites that are disrupting digestion as a secondary effect, not necessarily a primary effect, or you could have something like H. pylori directly in your stomach. If people have fungal infections, it usually means in most cases they have digestive trouble as well, coupled with many other factors that I talk about in my DVDs on that topic. So those issues of parasite cleanses, again, I talk all about that in my Healing Fungal and Parasite uh, Infections, the Absolute Essentials DVD series. So there's a pile of information for you. I'm just hoping to give you enough in the blog to see that if you practice some of the techniques I teach in my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, my audio program, You Are What You Eat, my related resources such as Eating the Check Way or Primal Pattern Eating, uh, which are just two titles for the same webinar, which you can get through the Institute, and my 1234 for Overcoming Addiction, Obesity, and Disease, which is the program I suggest for people with any kind of significant health problems or chronic health problems that aren't clearing because it looks 
quite heavily into mental emotional correlations to uh, health and disease and addiction. So I hope you enjoyed this little presentation on aids to digestion, uh, simple aids to digestion, and I look forward to sharing something with you again as soon as I can. Take care.